So the thing about women. Yeah, you do. Well, I also talk too fast. Yeah, people can understand you. Hello, guys. Welcome to. Do you think oh yeah. Hello, guys. Welcome back to the second episode of the Cozy. Oh no, is this the third? I can't remember. Second episode of the little podcast that I started back home, and I felt like it was going to be a bit weird doing it here because it's not exactly the cozy vibe. Jimmy, pull that up. <laughs> What is that reference to? <laughs> Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Okay, great. <laughs> great. We're not even a minute in and we have a reference to Joe Rogan. Oh, here it comes on. Is he meant to be a character? It's Yeah. Owen now plays Aussie Rules, which is an update for you guys. Um, so we're now in Australia three months. <laughs> no, Wait. That's a lie. Wait, what month is it? It is now March and my is the end of January, so it's Okay, sorry. Well, I was a month off. We're in Australia now two months and I feel like we got settled quite quick. And even though we like booked an Airbnb to give us some wiggle room for like getting an apartment, we rented in Milton slash Paddington for one full month. And that was to give us a chance to like find accommodation, apply for uh, apply for some jobs and really find ourselves in Brisbane. And I keep getting comments on TikTok and as well on YouTube asking me like, how did you find your apartment? And I don't even, I don't want to sound like real cocky being like, oh, we applied for two and we got our second one. But we put in a lot of work looking for apartments and I'd saved so many different apartments in different areas. We kind of had a general idea of where we wanted to live. It was more like Central, Fortitude Valley, Bone Hills, Tenerife, um, Newstead, New Farm, is that not? Yeah, so there were the areas that we wanted to live in just because for work, a lot of the, like, offices and businesses where we could get work were based around there so that's where we were looking and we kind of focused on one bed apartments which started at around 520 up to 700 obviously 700 was a bit too expensive and ideally we were kind of looking at the 550 to 600 price range you should expand per week as well. oh yeah uh also yeah so my co-host who doesn't have a mic uh just reminded me the pricing of apartments here is actually weekly. So obviously back at home in Ireland, you find out how much the rent is per month, but here it's per week, which I personally think is a crazy way to organize like apartments. So it's six, uh, like, so this place where we are, it's $600 per week. So it works out at $300 per person per week. And I feel like that was like a good price. Owen's looking at me, so now I don't know like what to say. No, just go here. I'm not. Owen! God, so Please! Rachel, I really don't want to do this. <laughs> just say what, how much it works out in euros. Just put your hand in here. It doesn't have to be so close. That's too close. Test. <laughs> yeah, okay. Test. <laughs> don't put your mouth around. <laughs> don't put your mouth <laughs> How much does it work out? 700 euros a month. Each, yeah. Yeah, so it, it works out at like 700 euros a month. Uh each which is like what you would pay at home um for like a one bed no a room in a house i actually don't even know a room in a house, yeah, yeah 700 in well, yeah. Even, yeah yeah housing at home is crazy and it's really funny when i've been talking to australians in work they're like oh there is a housing crisis here and obviously that is true there is a lack of housing but when i try to compare how much worse Ireland and Dublin is to Brisbane. They just don't really get it. They're like, oh, well, we have issues here as well. Like, yeah, fair enough, there are issues here and the price of apartments keeps going up and up. But the fact... Bye. But the fact is there's actual apartments available, whereas in Dublin, you just don't have that availability. So when we were looking for apartments, I literally was able to like write out a list of like 15 different apartments in our area that were within our price range whereas I don't think I'd even be able to come close to that in Dublin or even like closer to where we're from in Kildare and Leash so yeah and I know like on one of my in one of my uh, reels I made someone commented being like oh um Sydney is a completely different ball game and kind of like dismissing what we were after doing here i.e getting an apartment and getting a job 
that really annoyed me because we picked Brisbane because it wasn't as hard as Sydney or Melbourne to find accommodation. And yeah, like Sydney's definitely harder to find accommodation in and it's definitely probably more expensive. But you still have to work hard to get an apartment here because I know some people that have been like searching for like two plus months and they still can't find something, whether that's like there's no availability in the area they want or like the price is too expensive. One thing which I've been kind of like apprehensive to even share, even though I know for a fact multiple people do this and from reading Reddit, this is kind of how people get apartments. So basically in uh, certain parts of Australia, there's like loads of regulations around housing and uh, price gouging. So uh, a letting agent can't tell you to offer more than what is listed on the listing. But a lot of apartments, especially like one beds, they expect you to offer more than what is on the listing. So for this apartment, it was listed at 550 a week and our max was 600. So we were like, maybe we'll just chance it and offer the 600. Because I know some people offer like, they offer like $50 more a week and then we'll also offer like uh, an extra upfront payment along with their deposit so we didn't offer any extra payment but we did offer $50 more for the apartment and we were like praying that we got we'd get this because we really wanted it we really liked the area and it got accepted and I feel really guilty when I tell people that but like from checking out on reddit and talking to people where we both work you just kind of have to do that and I know like doing that makes things out of other people's price ranges but if we had been applying for apartments that were $600, we probably wouldn't have got them because $600 was our extreme max and we weren't able to like offer up 3000 plus upfront dollars. So yeah, that's probably my biggest tip. If you are looking at getting an apartment that is $600 or $550 a week, look for look for uh, housing or apartments that are lower than that and then offer it that bit more um, and as well you're going to have to fill out like an application and like talking about you, yourself and why you deserve the apartment I spoke about our careers back home in Ireland um, I had no references like my reference was my dad to say like I lived at home like my whole life and Owen didn't have any references either but we like wrote a personal essay about who we were as people and what we wanted to do in the area and it worked so definitely I, and I don't, I honestly don't want to get hate for that, for the fact we offered more because I'm the type of person that hates stuff like that because it's just like, but at the end of the day, like I'm not the landlord. I'm, I was just looking for somewhere to live and that's how we managed to get this place. I've spoken about this at length on this channel, but I have ADHD and object permanence is like a huge thing for people with ADHD. Example, if someone or something isn't directly in front of me, I kind of forget it exists. So obviously I'm in constant contact with my family. Like I ring my mom most days, twice a day in the morning when I'm walking to work and then in the evening before I go to bed because like that's when it best matches up with our um, different time zones. But my biggest issue is that like I don't have this like insane feeling of like it's not an issue like I think it's actually like a good thing like I don't miss anyone crazily like obviously when I stop and think or if I have like a bad dream I start to like miss people or the other day I came in from work and I think Owen was at footy training and no one was here and I was kind of like oh my god I wish I could just go in to my sisters and chat to them because I was so used to having access to my sisters back home and then I just don't have that anymore. Same with my mom. I was working from home basically the last like four years since the pandemic started in 2020. And my mom honestly turned into like my closest thing to a work colleague. Like she was always there with me and like I would go into town with her. I would do like the food shop occasionally with her. We just kind of did everything together. So I definitely do miss those things and I miss having them around but like I personally don't think I'm missing I don't know like in an ideal world I would just get my family to like pack bags and come here and live close by but I just don't think that's ever gonna happen and I would love if that happened because I love the weather I love the lifestyle here um so I do miss my family but I just kind of wish they all moved here so then I'd have them and I wouldn't have to miss out on anything. Other things I miss, I miss my local Chinese, I miss the Royal Garden, I miss Chippers, 
I love burger. I love chicken burgers and I love chips and I love curry sauce. So I miss all those things. Um, a lot of things you can get here, like you can get potatoes, you can get club orange, you can get um, gravy. Excuse the sirens. I'll wait till the pass. And there's like loads of subscription services where you can buy Irish food. Um, so I don't really think I'm missing snacks that much, but I miss my cat. I miss Peanut a lot. And he actually got sick uh, like two weeks ago. And I think he had like a kidney infection or something. So like, I really miss him. I suppose it's only been two months, but I'm definitely not getting that crazy homesickness that people talk about. Like the only, one and only time I had like crazy homesickness was during the Gwail Talks. When I first got into, into the house I was like living in for the Gwail Talks, I went into the bathroom and just cried. Cause like, I wanted to go home so badly, but I haven't felt that here. And I think it's because you don't really get a chance to like, be alone with your thoughts well I'm not anyway because we're constantly doing stuff and we got we got straight into work so yeah I just don't think I miss anything yet some things I love about Australia I love the weather it we're definitely like acclimatizing because we went to an NRL which is basically like a different type of rugby of rugby didn't realize there was two types back home in Ireland we play a union and NRL is huge here so we went to one of those games and I'll insert clips, but like the halftime show and just the overall spectacle of it, it was very American, um, but it was just mad. Like they had a horse that came on the pitch every time they scored a try. And it was quite easy to follow because again, it's very similar to rugby, but it was very stoppy, starty. So it was kind of, it wasn't as like continuous play. I'm not mad into sports. So my language here is probably not the greatest, but I hope you get what I mean. So we went to that. And that was nice, but one thing that like, I've had a moment of, oh my God, am I acclimatizing to the heat? The match was on in the evening and I was like to Owen, oh my God, what if I get cold? And he was like, what, you're not gonna get cold? And I was like, yeah, but like, what if it gets cold after the match? Like, what am I gonna do? Because I checked my app and it said it was gonna be 21 degrees at 10 o'clock. And I actually had a moment of thinking, I'm going to need a hoodie. Anyway, I didn't bring a hoodie, I didn't bring one, but I realized, oh wait, I'm actually after getting used to the heat because when it's really hot here, it's like 28 and the real feel might be 34. It's definitely cooled down since we were living in Milton, but I do love the weather. I love the constant sunshine and the blue skies. We had a couple of days there where it just rained constantly, but it was fine. It was still warm, so you'd, you'd, you didn't need to wear like a big coat, but the weather is definitely one of the highlights so far. Another thing I am obsessed with in Australia is Depop. Depop is so good here. I actually can't get across how good it is. I have made like a huge, well, not a huge Depop order because it was multiple small orders, but they're all arriving this week coming. So I'm definitely going to like make a video of me going through everything I got on Depop because the stuff is so good. Like I'm after getting, I got Doc Martin boots, Doc Martin shoes, the Oxfords and Doc Martin sandals because they're all stuff that I had at home and I'm not joking. I think they all came under $150 for all three pairs. And when I say these things are brand new and I'm just so excited for them to arrive. So I'm definitely fully back into my Depop era over here. And I genuinely don't think I'm going to buy anything new apart from like runners. I've, I have bought two new pairs of runners. What? I'm obsessed. I'm so easily influenced. So yeah, Depop is like another huge thing I'm obsessed with here. Another thing I keep getting questions about, people are wondering how I got into the job I'm in. So back home in Ireland, I worked in administration in education. It was actually for a departmental charity. Um, and then when I came over here, I was kind of like, look, I have loads of experience in admin. I might just do that. And I kind of had a feeling from talking to other girls that had been here that it was kind of easy to get administrative work, especially if you had any type of experience. So I started applying for jobs and one of the jobs I was applying for, it was actually a recruitment agency that was doing the recruitment process. And they contacted me to say the job I had applied for was gone, but they had another perfect position for me. And it was also in the education sector, but it was in HR. And I had very limited HR experience. It was like, I think the extent of my HR experience back home was doing like the onboarding and like, hello? Well, I, does the screenshot work? Uh, 
Uh, so I had very limited HR experience, but they were like, yeah, it's grand. Like you're just gonna basically be working doing like HR contracts for um, a different education organization. And because I had education admin experience back home in Ireland and I had just general administrative experience, I got the job and I literally, I, start, I signed up with the agency I say on like a Tuesday and on the Wednesday they got me in to do like an uh, emergency cover in a different company uh, as a receptionist so I did that and then a week later I started in this other education organization and I've been there since so I think that was at the end of February I think I started there and it's going great it's actually such a great little company and I'm making lots of friends my team are really nice and I'm actually learning so much about HR and contracts and payroll and obviously I didn't come to Australia to work to get like career experience but I genuinely do feel like the experience I'm getting in this organization is going to be like so important to my like future career so I'm really enjoy I'm really enjoying it and I am after getting offered a six month contract with this organization so obviously I was with the recruitment agency for the first like month and a half and then I in April I'm leaving the recruitment agency and then I'm going on the books as an actual employee which is very exciting and I can only work six months because I am on a work call visa that's like the longest amount of time you can work in one company under one contract and yeah I'm actually so excited to have like a solid well-paid job um and I'm just I'm just so buzzing I'm I, I feel like I got really lucky but at the same time it's not luck because back home in Ireland I was doing very similar work and I had the experience and if you're wondering oh should I move to Australia and get an admin job you are not going to get an admin job well that's probably a very strong statement you will find it hard to get an admin job without experience so definitely if you are straight out of college and all you have is your degree maybe just spend a year a year and a half getting getting experience in like an office back home before you come out here it will just make the job hunt so much easier if you can say yeah I've worked in an office for x amount of months and this is what I can do like even basic stuff like when I had my job interview they were like can you use SharePoint can you use um like they had loads of different payroll systems and I'd never used those before but like I had extensive experience in SharePoint teams just the entire Microsoft suite Excel so definitely just get real work experience because I'm I keep seeing TikToks and no offense to some people who come here but like some people come here and think they're going to walk into a job and then they're shocked when they keep getting declined from jobs and then when like anyone asks them a question like oh what experience did you come to Australia with and they're like oh I just graduated like fair enough Australia does have a shortage on certain people to work in certain sectors and certain jobs but like at the same time they want someone who can actually do the job especially when the rate of pay here is so good you're not going to walk into like a well-paid job if you have no experience behind you and Owen is also working in like an office setting but the craziest thing about his job is it's in insurance and working in t certain types of insurance roles in Australia count as your farm work so he has half of his rural work requirements done and I have zero so I still have to get my 88 days done if I want to stay next year whereas Owen is like halfway through so I don't know what I'm going to do and I don't even think I could work in the job that he's working in because obviously they're working in insurance and you're basically ringing people up and finding out about like their claims and I'm such an emotional person that if I had a feeling that someone was going to get bad news I'll probably start crying on the phone to them so we're definitely kind of worried about that at the moment but we're going to just like deal with it once we come to it aka once he's finished his 88 days and I have to start. Another thing that I keep seeing on TikTok uh, especially from British girlies or Irish girls to move here is that they're struggling to make friends and I don't think I'm like a good person to ask about making friends because I just tend to make friends wherever I go and that's not even in a braggy way it's just like I don't really care about putting myself out there and I don't know if that's because I've been making YouTube for x amount of years and I just have confidence but it's also I also think it could be like an ADHD slash autism slash um 
Wait. What's neurotypical? I actually don't even know. What is that called? I, anyway, anyway, people who aren't neurotypical, you know when you can like recognize traits, it's literally called like pattern recognition. When you meet someone first and you get a really good sense if you're going to like them or if you're going to become friends, I feel like I'm so good at that. Like if I meet someone and I'm like, mm, I, they're not, I'm not going to be friends with them. Whereas if I have a feeling that this person's really nice and I want to be friends with them, we will become friends because I will ask them to hang out. So that's happened... <sighs> One second. I wonder did Owen get his coffee? Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, he got his free coffee. Um, so if I meet someone and I'm like, we're going to be friends, I will make such an effort t for us to hang out and to get to know each other that we will just become friends. So, for example, there's a couple of girls that I work with. One of the girls, Jess, I, like, she's just so lovely and so nice. And we're so similar. Like, it happens a lot where I'm in the office and I say something to her and she's like, oh my God, I was literally thinking the exact same thing. So, love her so much. And I'm really excited to, like, do more things with Jess that are, like, outside the work setting. And then I also have Ari, um, obsessed with her. She also works in the same place I work. And then there's Coco, and then there's other girls that I've messaged on Instagram or they've messaged me, and they're from Ireland and they've moved to Brisbane. And I'm just like, I just feel like if you really want to make friends, you can make it happen. And even if you do hang out with someone and you don't hit it off, it's not the end of the world. At least like you had an experience, you had a fun time. Maybe it wasn't a fun time, but that's why you don't want to be friends. But you just have to put yourself out there. And I text a ballet school the other day, or emailed them even, to inquire about adult ballet lessons. So I'm going back to ballet. I danced from four to 21. I, I went on a break from like 17 to 20. And then from then I danced again for like a year after that. So I'm really excited to start ballet again. And I also want to, this is like so random, but I feel like it's so perfect for me. I'm also looking into joining a musical theater group or whatever. I really want to like do musical theater. I've never done it before, but I really like performing. I like the stage. I just like when I watch a play or a musical, it brings me so much joy and I just love the music from musicals. So I'm really excited to try that and hopefully I can make new friends from that. Something I did uh, last week or two weeks ago, I went to a journaling class, which was really fun and I made new friends there. One of the girls who was actually teaching the class, she is a journaling YouTuber and we now follow each other and it's really nice. And I just think when you move somewhere new, you, I know it's really hard, well, for me, it's not <laughs> like you need to just like Google things that you really want to do, sign up for them and go. And like, what's the worst that can happen? You have a good experience or you have a bad experience. And you're like, I never want to do that ever again. But genuinely, if you don't try, you're never going to know. And I just think that's like my biggest life advice for anything, including moving to Australia, because like I so easily could have been like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to move to Australia. What if it's terrible? And look how it's after turning out. I'm in like a lovely, clean, tidy apartment. I have a great job. I'm making new friends. I'm enjoying really good weather. Like yesterday, it was really nice out and we had no plans because it was Good Friday and everywhere was closed. We went, to the, we went to the NRL match, but we didn't really have any daytime plans. We went to the pool. We literally spent the whole day at the pool. Not the whole day. I think we were there for like an hour and a half. We swam. We ate crisps and it was just really nice and I so easily could have been like to Owen no I really like my life in Ireland so like let's not leave but I'm so glad we took a chance and came here and started our own little life because it's so easy to just be comfortable and not put yourself out there but if you don't try you're never gonna know what is actually for you. Another thing that I feel like I'm finally starting to kind of play with since we've gotten settled in this apartment, because I actually came over here with so few pieces of clothes because I was really conscious about not overpacking. So because I have so many cameras, I have my laptop, my iPad and stuff, I really didn't want to like overpack on the clothes front. So I brought like a couple of pair of linen trousers, two pairs of shorts, a few dresses and like three pairs of shoes, if even. I am really 
having fun with like finding my style and I'm doing that by going I'm I don't know why I said that word I'm doing that I'm doing that through Pinterest making little boards and kind of getting an idea of things I like my saved folder on TikTok right now is insane I'm just obsessed with saving cute outfits and I'm really excited to like really figure out the styles that I like in Australia I'm gonna show you my little outfit right now see this looks so basic because I kind of need to have my top like this it's basically a little black mini skirt and then these Adidas shoes and I'm just kind of using my gold jewelry that I had and I'm just I'm just excited and I feel like it's so much easier to experiment and figure out like what you like when the weather is nice because obviously at home you might put on a cute outfit and then you have to put on two layers on top of it to keep you warm so I am actually going to make that like a new series on this channel but yeah, I actually don't think I have any other updates apart from that. I'm trying to think. Hmm, no, that's pretty much it. For anyone wondering where we ended up living, we live in the valley. And I feel like this is actually a good thing to kind of end the video on, end the video with. When I tell people I'm living in the valley, whether that's in work or in a cafe or whatever, it's actually so disgusting like people's reaction is so bad like they literally make a face and they're like why would you want to live in the valley and I was kind of I keep going back and forth like trying to figure this out in my head and I don't even know if it's a case of like bad classism racism I don't even I actually don't even know because the valley has a good few like homeless people um but this in saying that if you live here, you end up like recognizing a lot of the homeless people. So it's not as if, like, I, I don't even want to say this because this is not how I feel. It's not as if the entire valley is like overrun with homeless people, which will which would give people a reason to be so disgusted about the fact we live here. But there's a couple of homeless people that like hang out at the train station, which is the exact same in any major city or town. But like, it's actually disgusting the, the way people react when I tell them I live in the valley and I always straight away say I have no issue with living in the valley because I don't like you smile at people and you you get on with it like and someone said to me like as well and said to someone oh well maybe you don't think the valley is that bad because like you're from Ireland and I was like what the fuck is that meant to mean I like I so that's definitely something not to be aware of but I've definitely noticed it about certain groups um just like casual misogyny casual racism and as like an outsider when you hear it you get so taken aback because I feel like a lot of it is like kind of hidden here where I was actually talking to one of the girls about it in work I feel like in your in Europe like say if you're in like Spain now I feel like I'm actually offending Europeans but you know like if someone was to cat call you in like Spain or like Portugal I'm using Portugal as an example because that literally happened to me and my sisters like whatever that's not nice but over here it's like the misogyny and the racism is kind of like hidden and sometimes I do think like overt and straight out racism and misogyny is almost better because then you have an idea of what people's motives are whereas here it's kind of like I can't figure people out because they're keeping all of these views to themselves and even though you might not see it from the outside like they're still making decisions based on these biases um so yeah that's definitely a very real thing and I have no issue with living in the valley I love being so central I love being able to go places easily and I love a place with character and I love when there's people around constantly and there's just a kind of more of a sense of community like I hate areas which are just full of like soulless apartment blocks with like one coffee shop and like a normal shop it's just like where are the people <laughs> So yeah, I hope what I'm saying isn't coming across badly because it's genuinely coming from a place of like frustration and confusion because I don't understand how people can be so discrimi discriminatory against people for literally existing. And I was talking to one of the girls about it and I was like, I know we don't need to qualify it or whatever, but like 
everyone that is struggling with addiction or like homelessness you need to remember that they were once a child and they were once vulnerable and they're now are vulnerable as well and it's just so crazy to me when people have like insane sympathy for children who are homeless which obviously makes complete sense but then that sympathy and wanting to help disappears the second they turn 18 it's like why are those people not also valuable to you but yeah i feel like this video has taken a complete random tangent but yeah i am actually going to go do my nails now so i think i might like just add it in at the end of this video so thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this little podcast please let me know if you have any questions about australia please let me know and try to be nice because i've gotten a couple of like mean comments recently and they actually kind of upset me and like i i didn't take them on like i didn't i don't know internalize them crazily but it also just made me kind of question people's intentions so yeah i appreciate you i hope you're having a lovely day and i'll see you guys in my next video